Let me call the City Commission meeting of May 7, 2019 to order, and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call. Mayor Weissman? Here. Vice Mayor Dr. Marks? Here. Commissioner Landman? Here. Commissioner Mizrahi? Here. Commissioner Narotsky? Here. Commissioner Weinberg? Here. Mr. Lawson? Here. Mr. Wolfen? Here. Commissioner Shelley is absent. You have a quorum. Thank you so much. Can we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the first order of business is the election of vice mayor. Um, I'm going to ask for a nomination or a motion for the election of vice mayor. Uh, vice mayor, Dr. Linda Marks. Denise Landman. Denise Landman has been nominated for vice mayor. Do I have any other nominations? No, Commissioner I second Sister. then. I second You second it. Any other nominations? Okay. <laughs> then I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narofsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Mayor Weissman? Yes. Commissioner Shelley is absent. The motion passes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm going to ask the city manager if there are any deletions or additions to our published agenda. No, Mayor. Okay, thank you. The next item is employee service reward awards, and I'm going to ask the city manager at this time to please present them. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, tonight, we're uh, recognizing two members of the Aventura Police Department for longevity of service. I'd like to invite uh, Detective Seeley up here with me, and Katina Rodriguez. Is she here? Okay, she she works midnight, so it was a it was a 50-50. We're going to get her get her here on time. Uh, it seems like we do this a lot. We recognize. Police, uh, police department for long, for long-standing service. Detective Seeley is. Uh, can I say you're a fraud expert? <laughs> he has solved well over a thousand cases in ID theft, credit card theft, tax fraud, and he's actually been deputized as one of our federal task force members to work on identity theft. That is a big thing down in South Florida. He's also been invited. I don't know if you have gone to teach at the federal law. Enforcement Academy in Georgia, and he's a former military member of uh, a former army member. Uh, he's been on our force 15 years. He's working towards the magic 20, uh, but we're very happy to have him, and it's really a, a pleasure that he's found a home here with us. And we're, well, like I said, we're lucky to have him. Okay, the next item on our agenda is our school reports, and I believe that I have Samuel Ginsburg here from ACES. Do I? Come on up. Okay, Samuel. Come right on up to the microphone. Clapping is allowed. Yep, clapping is certainly allowed. So is picture taking. Good evening. My name is Samuel Ginsburg, and I'm a sixth grader at ACES. It is my fourth year at this amazing school, and it is an honor to be here. I came to this country four years ago and never expected to be here talking about ACES. At ACES, we pride ourselves in giving back to the community. The National Junior Honor Society has grown to 53 members, and each month they participate in a chapter community service. Ms. Rosario does a great job at planning activities, and we, the kids, do the rest when we participate with enthusiasm. From the, fir from the first beach cleanup to the multiple sclerosis walk to feeding South Florida this past weekend, 
all of the activities have been so fulfilling. In addition, the Student Government Association has continued our school's participation in Joshua's Heart Food Drive, which was started by a former ACES student and continues with the help of her sister, who is currently in seventh grade. Grades K through eighth collect canned good and pasta, which are distributed to families in need. Students have had some amazing field trip opportunities recently. Kindergarten had a visit from some wild animals, first graders enjoyed a trip to Jungle Island, while fourth graders explored a shark valley in the Everglades. In middle school, sixth graders hiked and canoed Bone Valley, while seventh and eighth graders had the opportunity to visit the Miami Beach Holocaust Memorial, where they heard from a Holocaust survivor and toured the museum. Later this month, the third graders' classes will be visiting the Frost Museum, fifth graders will be traveling to Boston, and the eighth graders will enjoy a daily celebration at the Islands of Adventure before their graduation. Next week, first through eighth grade students will be participating in an annual talent show. It is a wonderful opportunity for students to showcase their interest in the arts and share with the community. We hope you can, we hope you can join us. In other exciting news, ACES is pursuing a STEM designation from Miami-Dade County School Program. Students in all grades have completed several STEM projects, including participating in the Cadena Initiative, where three of our sixth grade students won a runner-up in a competition and will be traveling to Mexico to present their project in the international competition. Lastly, after two days of meeting with staff, students, parents, and administrators, and visiting every fifth through eighth grade class, the National Forum to Accelerate Middle, middle Grades Reform has designated ACES a school to watch. A group of teachers and administrators will present at their conference this summer, and we are all excited about the honor. As you can see, there is a lot of things going on and a lot more to come. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity to share a few recent highlights in ACES, where excellence is the expectation, not the exception. Have a great evening. Samuel, thank you. And wait one second. Mom, do you want to come up here and take a picture of him so you get his face? You can come up here and take, take it. Samuel, you said, you said you've been here. Four years. Yes. Right? Where did you come from? Venezuela. I moved here April 2nd, 2015. Well, yeah, you have English Ephibola. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I think I can speak for all of us that you did an absolutely wonderful job. Thank you so much. It's wonderful. Okay. All right. Uh, Thank you. Have a good day. Our next school report from Aventura Waterways. Let me ask Katerina Bass to please come up. Going once. Going twice. No Katerina Bass. <laughs> All right, well, we have school testing going on. So I'm going to say sometimes it's very hard for the kids to come, depending upon the grade they're in and the test administration that's going on that day. All right, the next item on our, who's walking in? Do I have Katerina Bass? Well, come on in. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, the next item on our agenda is the consent agenda, and I'm going to ask if any member of the commission would like to remove an item from the consent agenda. Can I have a motion then for approval of the items on the consent agenda? Motion. Motion made by Vice Mayor Landman, second by Commissioner Mizrahi. Can I please ask the clerk for a roll call vote? Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you so much. Um, before we go on to the next item, which is our zoning, well, actually, we don't have any quasi-judicial hearings tonight, so we'll go right to ordinances. But I really would like to take a moment to commend Chief Pegues for the outstanding dinner that we were able to celebrate with you and the members of your police staff. I truly believe, I'm speaking for all of us in saying, there is no finer police department anywhere in the country. And I just want to thank you. Okay, 
I'm going to ask the city attorney to read the first ordinance, please. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, granting to People's Gas System, a division of Tampa Electric Company, a Florida corporation, a non-exclusive franchise in the City of Aventura, authorizing People's Gas System to use the public rights of way and streets of the city for the purpose of constructing, maintaining, operating, and extending gas lines in the streets and public places of said city thereon and thereunder, providing for a franchise fee, providing the terms and conditions of such grant, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Thank you so much. Can I please have a motion for the approval of this ordinance? A motion. A motion made by Commissioner Narotsky. Can I have a second, please? Second by Commissioner Mizrahi. I'm going to request that the city manager please review this item with us. Um, this, this gas franchise is a normal um, agreement that the city has with uh, people's gas. The, uh, we had a, when the city was incorporated, the franchise agreement was, was uh, started back, back then. It was for 15 years. Normally these agreements go for 30 years. The, in 2011, the, uh, the agreement expired. However, it, was still in, it still maintained itself into effect. It was brought to our attention, and we agreed to a 30-year um, franchise agreement that allows people's gas to deliver gas to our community. It also, it also accounts for us to receive 6% of gross revenues from people's gas that they collect from customers. Um, it controls the permitting, restoration, any work that goes on in the city, and it kind of gives us a way to manage anything that's um, upgraded by the, the gas company and a way to monitor them. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a standard agreement. and. That's really just about it. Okay, let me ask if any members of the commission have any questions about this. <coughs> All right, I do. 6% um, of gross revenue. Do we have any idea what last year's gross revenue would be or what this will amount to for the city? I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, the, in the agreement, should any other city receive in their agreement a higher percentage or 7%, we would automatically be granted that. Um, I don't have the exact um, figure. How much we can get it. Yes, we, do, we absolutely yeah. can. We, yeah, I would just like to know what that will add to the city revenue stream. Okay. Are there any other questions? Commissioner, La uh, Vice Mayor Landman. Um, <laughs> city Manager, we discussed this just so for the public to know. This 30-year agreement begins? Again, okay, it, it's pre it, it's backdated to 2011 and will expire in 2041. Okay, so it doesn't begin for 30 years. To, it's know, 30. It's a 30-year agreement okay. backdated to when it expired. So thank you. We've already earned to it. Do we get the six percent revenue from the backdate? No, we've yeah. always gotten it. We've always <laughs> the, received that. The gas company properly continued to pay the amount. Uh, a matter of fact, that's in accordance with a case that FPL was once involved in. Even where a franchise price expires, the payments are continued to be made, and they have Hopefully lived up to their uh, requirements. Okay. Thank you. All right. So all of us will be waiting to see what that what that dollar amount actually actually is. Okay. Um, are there any other questions or comments? Then I'm going to open the item up for comment from the public. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to address this item? Okay, then I'm going to close it for public comment, and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman. Yes. Motion passes on first reading. Thank you so much. I'm going to now ask the city, uh, the city attorney to please read the second ordinance up for consideration B. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending ordinance number 2018-07, which ordinance adopted a charter school operating and capital budget for the Aventura City of Excellence School for fiscal year 2018 to 2019, July 1 to June 30th, by revising the 2018-2019 fiscal year budget document as outlined in Exhibit A attached hereto. 
authorizing the city manager to do all things necessary to carry out the aims of this ordinance and providing for an effective date. Okay, can I please have a motion for approval of the ordinance made by Commissioner Dr. Linda Marks? Can I have a second, please, seconded by Commissioner Weinberg? I'm going to request the city manager to review the item. Thank you, Mayor. This is a, this is a good budget amendment. We're accounting for taking, uh, we're amending the budget to accept uh, a little over $204,000 in grants to the school system. One was for security enhancements, one was for student enrichment, another one was to help fund the, city, uh, the police officer that we have assigned to the school at ACES, and Florida's Best and Brightest was another portion of the grant to come, to come into the school. So this is a very positive amendment. Okay. Um, do any members of the commission have any questions or comments? Okay, so what we're doing is we're amending the budget of the current year yes. to be able to take it. Fine. Seeing as there's no commissioner with any comment, I'm going to open the item up for public comment. Is there anyone from the public that would like to address this item? Then I'm going to close it for public comment, and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes on first reading. Thank you so much. We now have a second reading under our ordinances. It's item number nine. I'm going to ask the city attorney to read the first ordinance. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, amending Article 12, nonconforming uses and structures of Chapter 31, land development regulations of the city code to add regulation for alteration or enlargement of lawfully nonconforming assisted living facility ALF uses or structures providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I have a motion for approval of the ordinance? Made by Vice Mayor Landman, seconded by Commissioner Mizrahi. Um, let me ask the applicant if they have any additional comments. And while he's walking up to the microphone, let me welcome our Senator, Senator Pizzo, and we'll be with you, and his Chief of Staff, Maggie Gerson, to our chambers. Go on, Mickey. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, members of the Commission. Nothing really new to add. We spoke at length at the workshop a couple months ago and at last month's Commission meeting. Here to answer any questions that you may have that have come up. Otherwise, we'll just incorporate what we've said before and ask that you pass this on second reading. Thank you. Um, any members of the commission that have any questions or comments about this item? Commissioner Dr. Linda Marks. I just have a comment. I think it's going to be a beautiful addition to the property, so we're very thankful that you're doing that. All right, then I'm going to open the item for public comment. Is there anyone from the public that would like to address this item and address the commission about it? Seeing as there are none, I'm going to close the item for public comment, and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes on second and final reading. Thank you so much. And now, after I have consulted with our attorney, I'm going to suspend the normal agenda. Um, and I'm going to ask that our senator representing our district, Senate District 38, please give us his um, legislative update. And for those of you sitting here, legislative session ended Friday, but went on into Saturday, but went on into Saturday. So I can't remember the last time we had someone here to give us the update two days basically after session was over. So we do want to thank you, want to welcome you, and please. Thank you, Ma thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Commission, it was a uh, very interesting session. It was my first, uh, as you know. Um, I want to first thank you for coming up early. A number of you, I think only Dr. Marks uh, missed, uh, coming up early, it was, it was very effective. Aventura featured prominently in a number of discussions as it related to home rule. 
more specifically uh, as related to uh, communications companies looking to skip the line and go without permits. Um, I use Aventura as an example uh, as to why just us doing our job and working with a community that, that, that has the best interest in mind and best practices is not necessary to preempt. So I remained a no vote on that one. Um, I want to tell you by Monday afternoon, each of you will have in your email box, including the city manager and city attorney, my breakdown as it applies to the 15 cities in our district. Uh, there were nearly 2,000 bills that were presented and filed this session, 196 passed in both houses, uh, and we'll be heading to the governor's desk. I do not, uh, um, perhaps one or two, I believe the bulk of all bills will be signed by the governor. Um, there were a lot of headlines on, on philosophical issues, political issues, fiscal issues, um, and I want to have some time, like I said, till Monday to be able to unpackage some of those. Uh, the good news is, uh, assuming he doesn't, he doesn't scratch it off, uh, Aventura has a fully funded project from this session uh, for the curb swell. Um, it took a little machination, but uh, in the first round of presentations, uh, Aventura was not in the uh, first round of financing. We took $50,000 as a placeholder from another project to place it in to keep it alive, um, and I'm proud to say that it was, it's now fully funded. Um, so we hope the governor doesn't veto that as well. Uh, a number of um, issues, uh, the business rent tax has lowered 20 basis points, so commercial tenants will now be paying 5.5% as opposed to 5.7% uh, to keep in mind. Um, the largest issues, obviously, that, that grabbed the most headlines included things like Amendment 4 and Sanctuary Cities. Um, I'm here to tell you that none of the practices that are existing within the city of Aventura have to change. This isn't, it, it's effectively a political proxy and, and a mandate. It's not anything or any greater task that will be uh, placed upon Aventura. Um, the Coastal regions, uh, there's a new formed committee of senators and representatives as it relates to coastal areas and places on the water where greater attention has to be given. I will tell you that we had a lot of headwinds on water projects and sewer projects because of the county commissions effectively essentially kicking the can down the road for so many years. It was very difficult to get buy-in from the appropriations chairs as it relates to water and sewer projects because consent decrees have not been followed by the county since 2013 because pump stations are failing and leaking sewage out into the bay. And so the question is always asked, do you want us to go ahead and approve project and dollars for a project that will tie into a system that's just not working? Um, so there's a lot of work to be done there. Uh, the small cell 5G obviously is the issue that we spoke of. Uh, it was a set of Bill 1000. Uh, I want to thank your staff for getting back. We resolved that issue within, a, I think it was within one day. Between a community affairs meeting, which I sit on, and a, the committee on finance and tax, the issue was resolved. Um, basically, not to snub our nose at the communications companies, but just to say that the, the real story is that, that, that our cities are doing an excellent job. Um, um, Senator Pisa, would you please go into the details of that? Sure. So Senate Bill 1000 effectively said that legislation that was passed in 2017 where they, the cities were implored to work closely together with communications companies to lay conduit and other types of lines and fiber. Um, they were meeting some, what they believed to be resistance and unreasonable uh, expectations from certain cities. So I had simply asked at the community affairs meeting, I proudly represent 15 cities. Can you name one city in my district that gives you a problem? At, at the community affairs meeting, not one was named. Maggie, my chief aide, was handed a piece of paper that listed four cities. Aventura was one of them. I said, ooh. I texted the mayor. I said, we need to talk. Uh, shortly after the meeting, we spoke, and then... Ronald was a, Mr. Watson was immediately available. And it turns out when they said that they were holding it up and causing great delay in the Super Bowl was of, was of a time sensitive and urgent issue, uh, the real story was they cut into your, I think it was your lamp lines they cut in causing $17,000 worth of damage. And you guys wouldn't give the permit until they paid. That was reasonable. Uh, all of a sudden they paid. Uh, and, and the permit was cleared. Uh, and, and they kept pressing on the Super Bowl issue. And I said, I, I believe rumor has it one of the teams might actually be staying in Turnberry at Aventura. So, we obviously appreciate the issue. I continued to be a no vote because by that second meeting, I had resolved the issues with Aventura, with Sunny Isles, with Bay Harbor, uh, and with uh, Miami Beach. So there is, a, there is a big preemption kick. There are a couple uh, votes that I did vote along with that would be considered uh, preemption or against home rule, but they were all on certain practices that you guys already honor and you already do, and things that I think that it, for good partnership and development, a good partnership in business that cities already do, and you do. It relates to impact fee and rate schedules and posting those and making those available to businesses. That's really about it. Um, again, there were 196 bills. 
that we have to unpackage. I want to do short summaries on all of them and how, and how they're applicable to, uh, to our district. But I'm happy to take any questions. Are there any commissioners that have any questions for Senator Pizzo? Uh, Commissioner Narotsky. Hi, thanks so much for coming. It's very much appreciated. Um, can you touch on the um, what we had spoken about um, at our last meeting? Sure. So uh, late in the session, uh, there was a lot of talk about what would happen with referendum dollars. This past November, uh, 362 was a yes, 363 was a no. And basically it spoke to what I would objectively tell you was a very ambiguous ballot language that said, that's, uh, uh, do you agree to raise your property taxes or to afford property taxes to be raised for the payment to teachers and for uh, school safety and hardening. Uh, Palm Beach County, uh, as an aside, was very specific. They said traditional public schools. Miami-Dade County did not have that language. So the big discussion was about whether or not this applies also to charter schools. I, I made it very clear and I was very transparent that I believe in a um, objective carve out for a number of schools that are in my Senate district, Doctors Charter in Miami Shores being one, Aventura being another. I know Dr. Steve Gallon also makes the same carve out and consideration. You guys give $66 million to the public school district. I also thought it was uh, rather untoward that you didn't receive a letter back on your uh, October letter of solicitation from Miami-Dade's uh, school superintendent. I think you got a response, only a self-serving one in January. Uh, be that as it may, what passed at the very late hour uh, in, on, on, on Thursday, the bill had language that the referendum dollars would, would be shared proportionally to all students, regardless of school type. Friday morning, it came off. Friday night, it went back on. Until finally, at long last, I asked for a point of clarification and I asked in questions or debate, I believe it was, to Kelly Stargell, the Senate sponsor, I said, I just want to be very clear that the latest permutation of this bill, the iterations language basically is that the referendum dollars that have passed from the last election will be kept by traditional public schools going forward. Any subsequent referendum will be shared proportionally amongst all students in the district. And that basically is the position. Miami-Dade will be keeping the dollars as it relates to this past referendum and any subsequent referendums will be shared proportionately. Any follow-up, Commissioner Narotsky? No, any, Commissioner Ms. Rahi. Thank you, Senator. So bottom line, we just need to wait until the next election to be able to get any dollars shared with our schools? The next election, but you'll have to remember that there was a silo of 150 plus million dollars that are going to uh, charter schools that are not going to public schools. And so I'll give you a uh, not really hypothetical, a real life example. Doctors Charter had asked me to submit a funding request for $120,000 for a school resource officer because they're effectively governed by their own city individuals. They're not, they don't have a, a for-profit third party that, that's licensed to operate them. And they really need the money, the $120,000 for the school resource officer. Based on the budget that was passed and the education budget that was passed, those $120,000 for school resource will be available out of that budget. But yes, to answer, the short answer to your question is the dollars that were approved by the voters this past November are going to be for traditional public schools only. Um, let me ask a point of clarification. I think what Commissioner Mizrahi said is we have to wait for the next yes. election. However, the referendum was a four-year referendum. It is. So does that mean for four years, charters will not get those dollars, but any subsequent referendum, charters will be included? Correct. And I, and I suspect that um, this was a little bit of a carrot probably with two sticks to follow. I believe that uh, traditional public schools may see and suffer some, some more tightening and restrictions on dollars, um, which would perhaps force the issue that you may see another referendum even within the four-year window. But it would be a four, it would not be the next election. It would Correct. be for four years. Any other questions for the Senator? Uh, Commissioner Weinberg. How are you doing, Senator? Two okay. epidurals this morning, but I'm okay. <laughs> What's that? Two epidurals in my back, but I'm doing oh, okay. Very sorry to hear that. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> At least you're in Aventura now and not yes. Tallahassee, so that's got to make it a little better. This is true. Um, just want to make sure nothing uh, passed that would affect the well-being of condominium associations. So uh, that's a very broad question. Um, I had filed two uh, condo-related bills. The first was Senate Bill 1152, which spoke to being uh, allowing buildings 75 feet and older over a certain age, not retrofitted with sprinklers, to be able to opt out. 
I thought the reality was it would be displacing a number of elderly uh, residents, especially those on fixed incomes, because the retrofit could be upwards of $10,000 per unit. It would be an unfair surprise. It would be a reflection of either the commissioners, uh, the board of the condo, um, or even the legislators kicking the can down the road, which they did. There was a very real deadline of January of 2020 that the retrofit had to occur in a number of buildings, and it, it applies obviously to my district, uh, district-wide. Uh, we found a compromise, we kicked it out five years, and we've also asked for a study from Mopaga to, to be able to do a data call, which basically means to, to do a real assessment of which buildings are, are, are affected. The other condo association bill that I filed had to do with effectively criminalizing really nefarious behavior, uh, and it sparked not a little bit of controversy, it sparked a lot. Um, one senator actually uh, gave me his vote yes in a committee meeting by saying that a lot of boards are like Al-Qaeda and they have their sleeper cells. So, um, but the issues that were raised therein, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, to answer your question, I'm proud to say that there were a number of things that were filed in that bill, in my subsequent bill, that the bill itself, standing alone, did not pass, uh, but I don't have pride of authorship, a number of really good points and parts of those bills were uh, placed into other bills. What I'm most appreciative of is we developed relationships early on, uh, good relationships early on with, with new agency heads, new secretaries, and new directors. I'm proud to tell you that um, I, I take a lot of responsibility or credit for the fact that the top investigator for the Department of Banking and Professional Regulation for condos and timeshares will now be located in Miami-Dade County. So all of those cries for help that we never get a response, we never get, Secretary Bashir's included language in a bill uh, that we helped draft that places um, Department of Banking and Professional Regulation's condo investigations unit here in Miami-Dade County, which is huge. It's huge. Huge. Uh, but to say do anything that affects or, or condo related, there are a number of things. That'll be part of the Monday unpackaging that I, that I sort of described. We found some opt-out language in a condo bill that's on its face is not seen, but by reference to another statute shows that you can opt out. The, uh, just so I'm clear, this uh, sprinkler and the, the delay now, this really is, it's been years, right? I mean, no one ever actually wants to pull the trigger. It keeps getting uh, delayed. It's a tremendous financial hardship, but at the same time, it's proven that it saves lives. So there's, there's a real so, paradox uh, there. I, I, there, there. Senator Ed Hooper is a former fireman. Uh, he's my colleague in the Senate, and he filed a bill, nine, Senate Bill 908, that basically said you had to put sprinklers in. It gave a design uh, a deadline by uh, the end of this year, and then subsequently gave an installation or commencement of construction, pulling building permits within the year thereafter. I had filed a separate bill that basically said that uh, associations with two-thirds of the vote should be able to opt out if they chose not to have it. That doesn't mean that they were off the hook from an ELSS system, which is an emergency life safety system. They could have a plaque on the front of the building, which would describe what they have, whether it's by alarm or by some other type of suppression system. The way fire marshals were reading it in various districts is they were interpreting it to mean sprinklers, and so they were enforcing that part. It, it is the fault, uh, if there is the blame, on board uh, condo associations that did not save for a rainy day, that did not put money aside because they wanted to artificiate a lower, you know, a, uh, lower number on association fees. It's also the blame of the legislature that Senator Hooper admitted. I wasn't there when they were kicking the can down the road, but that admitted that it had been, it had been kicked and kicked and kicked uh, to the point that it was set out. There, there was a prospective bill mirroring mine last year that Governor Scott had vetoed because six days prior to his signing was the London fire, the London high-rise fire where, where a number of people died, so he wasn't going to sign that bill. So I actually, I asked for a compromise. Uh, what was really interesting to see was Senator Hooper had presented his bill. He got a 7-0 vote, yes, thumbs up, in, um, in one committee. I took my bill, which was completely an opposite of his, to another committee, and I got a 9-1 vote, yes. So here we were. So uh, they were waiting to see what was going to happen, but I said not that I'd like to negotiate against myself, but I fully intend to meet with Senator Hooper and have a confluence of these two bills to find a compromise. Uh, and, and we have. The compromise is a lot to allow for more time for this to kick out, to see what we really have for buildings. The quotes that it, Senator Hooper was presenting was uh, an average of $1,732 per unit, which basically meant that people would be paying $11 per unit per year on a 10-year plan. My proposal was very simple. If this is a critical life safety issue, then certainly the insurance premiums we all pay in our condos would reflect that discount. I put an alarm in my house and AIG gives me a certain discount. I put surveillance cameras in my house, they give me another discount. It may not pay for itself in one year's time, but maybe 36 months it does. I had assumed that if this is such a critical life safety issue as it was being presented while, while his bill was being presented, that surely the insurance companies and the underwriters would reflect that discount in the policy premium. It worked out to be a little less than 5%. So if the sprinkler companies weren't willing to have the annuity, banks weren't willing to finance based on a 5% down payment, 
with an annuity, then it's sort of the actuaries are telling you that it's not a critical life safety issue. That so few numbers occur or result in death or injury or property destruction, they're not willing to give that kind of discount. I thought that was a fair compromise because it, with all different types of numbers, like I said, were being thrown around. If you go over about 90 or 100 feet, you now need a certain type of pump and you can be whacked to $10,000 a unit. And again, those association boards and the legislatures before them have not asked for people to save for a rainy day. And it's an unfair surprise for somebody on a fixed income of $2,200 a month to assume they're going to pay $580 additional on a 10-year payment plan. If I may, the, it's, it's somewhat confusing, and maybe you, know, you can clarify, but at the last meeting of the Amateur Property Managers Association, there was great concern. These are... Uh, condominium association managers in buildings that have sprinkler systems, these are newer buildings, they were concerned about tremendous expense for uh, being required to install new life safety systems. Uh, most of them had never heard of it before. There was a representative there from, you know, a, a life safety fire alarm company that told them about this new requirement that would be a tremendous, it would require a special assessment from every single building. Do you know what they were referring to and is this accurate? So, the, again, it speaks to what I had said earlier about the interpretation of what an emergency life safety system is. Some fire marshals where buildings had neither a fire extinguisher, a fire sprinkler, or even a fire alarm, their interpretation was fire sprinkler, which was the most cost prohibitive. So this study is basically a, a mandate to all cities and to counties that the study is coming on which buildings uh, are, are without uh, particular systems and which ones will need what and what uh, current position they're in. But you can safely and comfortably say to that building association that with the passing of this law, should it be signed into law, um, that uh, the fire marshals, either for the cities or for the counties, need to be mindful that legislation is passing. They should not be, that was a big problem I had, that fire marshals in certain locations were, were characterizing something as, as the most expensive cost prohibitive option, and there really was no recourse for any of those association members or even the residents to, you know, to cry foul. But now they can and now they have to do so with the direction of the state's head fire marshal, who is Jimmy Petronas, the chief financial officer. So I can assure you if there's any issues, uh, even as to one particular unit, one particular building, I'm happy to, to run it by his office and to get a, an opinion letter or a, a position letter from them as to what that particular building does and does not have to do. Great. And if you don't mind, I will get with your office at some point and would love to have you speak at an Aventura Property Managers Association meeting and let them hear it right from you, uh, what the status is, what's likely to happen, what's likely not sure. to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Sure. Um, a, little, a little bit as a follow-up to that. Um, I know they use or should use data to make and drive these decisions. The South Florida Building Code is one of the toughest in the country. Uh, we don't build out of wood. Um, I, I would like to also, and I think you would, see the data of how many um, people, and one would be too many if there is one, have been killed in fire related in, in condos, certainly in Aventura, and in, in, in your whole district. I would like to see the data on that. Uh, we, we, we actually, to that point, Mayor, we have, we have two conflicting mm -hmm. official reports, um, and, and they vary widely. The, the best analogy that I gave during a committee meeting was, um, well, two actually. You know, there's 72,000 people that die on the roadway every year based on traffic fatalities. If we reduce the speed limit on 995 down to 10 miles an hour, I can assure you that nobody would die. But there's a balancing test that society's prepared to recognize of the speed that we have to get and the opportunity costs and, and, and that speed. Also, my dad's got a classic 1950s Cadillac convertible with no seatbelts in it. Uh, but it's still legal and lawful to drive on the roadway. And the state can't go back in and tell them to put seatbelts in and it's still legal to drive. So. Um, it is, it is an unfair surprise to a number of residents because their boards have not asked to put money away and haven't been diligent uh, in that respect. But, you know, to their credit or to their lack of fault, the, the legislature hasn't given them a clear path and direction on what they were supposed to be doing. Uh, but, but now, now we, we, we suspect that they will. I'm happy to provide that. Anything else from the commission? Uh, was there anything on transportation that would impact this district? Um, does the Kendall Parkway reach Aventura? <laughs> I, it's, it's not, no, yesterday. not yesterday. Maybe by tomorrow. Um, it, it's, it's no, it speaks to what I spoke about earlier, that there, there, there's been a, a great communications breakdown between the county commission um, and I believe cities and especially legislatures. We were called traitors. We were called little boys. Uh, we would receive texts early in the morning saying, don't do anything, absolutely nothing that affects Miami-Dade County, made very broad statements. Um, I stayed out of the fray as it relates to the MDX geographically because it really didn't, it doesn't affect my district that much. 
um, and there was, a, there was a lot of go slow, hurry up issues that resulted uh, with that. Things got very personal, um, but we try to find uh, a balance. Um, while I think that our transportation network as it relates to Miami-Dade County is overwhelmingly subpar, um, I, I did not vote to strip MDX of their power um, and their ability to collect revenue. Uh, several others did and did so in the majority. Commissioner Lamon. I just want to thank you for being here and, uh, you know, for keeping us in the loop, for communicating with us. And, and I hope that as, you know, as the years go by, we continue to have this good of a relationship with our senator. Thank you. Thank you. If you could just show us the notes you used, because I know there were none. It's amazing. Really, honestly, you're naming bills by number. You have no notes with you at all. It's pretty incredible. Would you like him to go through every bill? Because he will tell you the number of every single one of those 200 bills. There is one, there is one other one. I apologize. I, I mean to take everybody's time. I apologize. Uh, Senate Bill 1730 is a growth management bill that Senator Tom Lee had passed. Um, that speaks to one of the bills that I was told by the county commission, don't do anything. Leave it alone. Well, <clears throat> a, this is the reality you, you must all accept sometimes. When the majority of party is Republican in the Senate, Republican in the House, and Republican governors in cabinet, a bill is going to pass. And uh, some people just take the hard line, I'm voting no, I'm voting no, I'm against this, I'm against this, and say so loudly with photo ops and video clips. But realizing the reality that a bill is going to pass, I endeavored to make certain bills less bad um, by meeting with people individually, not embarrassing them on the floor. Senate Bill 1730 is a perfect example. The House bill was abhorrent, and the Senate bill was workable. The important issues as it relates to that bill is a very specific section which says that mandatory inclusionary zoning uh, can be enforced by a municipality, by a city, or by a county. But you do so with having to offer the incentives to the developer, um, either with a density bonus or some other type of incentive so they're made whole. I'm actually personally able to afford this position because of that type of uh, business, candidly. Uh, and I think it's, it's smart and it's the best practice. It's what's, what's done in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and, and Connecticut, and successfully. It does not have to take away from the affordable housing dollars available from Florida, uh, uh, Florida Housing Finance, the SHIP dollars. Obviously, the Sadowski Trust Fund is, was a big issue. Um, most of that money will not be swept this year, but it's done under the auspice that it's being used for Hurricane Michael, not that it's being used for urban infill lots. But I just want the commission to know that you can now require inclusionary zoning on a project. <clears throat> by way of example, if you, are, you have 80 units that are by right for the current zoning, you can offer a density bonus of free market units so long as it has an affordable housing component. It's a smart thing to do. It's a tough love measure for some next door neighbors, but it's the way that you allow developers to go out of pocket to, build, to develop those affordable housing units. Um, and I still haven't gotten clarity from an agency yet as to whether that also extends to workforce housing or whether it's just restricted to affordable based on the AMI. Uh, so we'll have an opinion on that for you as well. But that's, a, that's an important bill. You have a new big high rise or mixed use project going up. You want to be able to have affordable housing units within it. You want the developer to be able to build them on site and not pay to some fee. Um, thereof, and um, but you have to offer incentives, which are, which are very doable. So. Anything else from my commission? Okay. Thank Again, you. we want to thank you so much for coming here so soon after session and, and giving us the major points. We all look forward to your written report. We know it will be very, very thorough. Um, Maggie, Maggie just pulled in about an hour ago from Tallahassee. She had yeah. to pack the office up, so she just got in. So she's got to start typing what I say uh, for Monday. So Maggie, take the week off. <laughs> and we're, we're happy that you're both here. Thank you very much. Back home. Thank you. We're very Thank happy. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, back to our regular agenda, and I'm going to ask the city attorney to read the last ordinance, ordinance number C. Uh, I believe number B, uh, or letter B, rather. B? B. Did I skip it? Uh, 9B. Uh, this is the City Commission in its capacity as the Aventura City of Excellence School Board of Directors, an ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, adopting the attached charter school operating and capital budget for the Aventura City of Excellence School for fiscal year 2019-2020, July 1 to June 30th, pursuant to Section 405 of the City Charter, authorizing expenditure of funds established by the budget, providing for budgetary control, providing for personnel authorization, providing for gifts and grants, providing for amendments, providing for encumbrances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date.
Okay, let me ask for a motion for approval of the ordinance. Made by Vice Mayor Landman, seconded by Commissioner Mizrahi. Um, do any members of the commission have any questions or comments? Okay, I do, City Manager. Seeing as the session just ended in Tallahassee and the governor hasn't signed the increase in the FEFP, how do we do a budget without knowing the increase that we're going to be getting per student? We actually make a, an estimate on what that increase would be. And I think we budgeted 1%, oh, I'm sorry, 2%. And uh, sir, to the best of your knowledge, what is it coming in at? It's not 2%. I guess my question really is, we would know now what it is, and it could have been brought in June with real numbers and real data. So my question really is, how, you know, why bring it in, in May when we really don't have the information? And my understanding is it's going to be something like, and don't hold me to it, something like a $245 per student increase in FEFP. So just let's make a note of it for next year that we really should have the information before us. And I think the final budget has to be in Tallahassee by September 24th. So we're way, way in advance of, of what we're going to do. And I think we get a clearer picture of what our fiscal needs are for the school and what the resources are if we give it till end of session. As, as long as we're keeping session in the time frame that I, is, I understand when session went over how it's hard, but that probably won't be the case next year either. Okay, anything else? Then let me open um, the item for any public comment. Seeing as there's no public comment, I'm going to ask, I'm going to close the item and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes on second and final reading. Thank you. Let me ask the city attorney to read the last ordinance of the day, item C. Thank you, Mayor. City Commission in its capacity as the governing board for the Don Sofer Aventura High School an ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, adopting the attached Don Sofer Aventura High School budget fund 191 for fiscal year 2019-2020, July 1 to June 30th, pursuant to section 405 of the city charter, authorizing expenditure of funds established by the budget, providing for budgetary control, providing for personnel authorization, providing for gifts and grants, providing for amendments, providing for encumbrances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Can I please have a motion to approve it? Made by Commissioner Dr. Linda Mark, seconded by Commissioner Mark Narotsky. Um, let me ask if any members of the commission have any questions or comments. Okay, mine would be the same as it was on ACES that I think we should wait until we have the information from Tallahassee if it's going to happen in a timely manner. I'll open this item for public comment. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to address us? I'm going to close the item to public comment and I'm going to ask for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Mizrahi? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes on second and final reading. Thank you so much. We have no resolutions that, uh, that are required right now, so we go right to item 11, which are reports. Do any of the members of the commission have a report? Uh, have at it. <laughs> Okay, I'm not uh, the Roberts rules. I didn't really read that one. Um, I want to add to is um, the next the discussion that we are having on next week the workshop. Can we have a discussion about um, the lack of funding that we're receiving from the? Uh, can we get that on the agenda, please? It's on. Uh, it's on. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Do we get it yet, or did I miss it, or it doesn't come out till? No, it's not out yet. Okay. Okay. Not yet. Yeah, and if we yeah, we just make sure that we have all options. that was going to be on there. So. Okay, yeah, just so we could have all options there. Thanks. 
Okay. Um, then we're done with comments. I'm going to go to number 12 on our agenda, and that's public comments. I'm going to ask the city attorney to review with the commission members the purpose of this item. Thank you, Mayor. The public comment portion of the agenda is for the city to receive input from the public. It is not for the commission to engage in discussion with the presenter or to uh, answer questions that may be presented. If there's any follow-up needed, that will be handled subsequently by the city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. I'm going to now ask if there are any members of the public that, have, that want to address the commission. If there's anyone that does, please come up. And no, please come up and please state your name and address for our city clerk. Good evening. Thank you for your time. My name is Michael Jacobs. I'm a resident of this excellent city. My address is 20875 Northeast 31st Place, uh, 33180. Um, for the past four or five years, I've had the honor and pr privilege of helping out run the Adult Softball League over at Founders Park. Uh, it's a, a passion project. Uh, it's open to any adult over 18. Um, we run three seasons a year, and this past Sunday we uh, finished our winter season, which is, uh, you know, we have seven teams, and uh, it's very competitive, and a team uh, called Aventura's Finest, headed by a captain named Manny Pomerank, defeated, it was a best two out of three series, defeated a team called Eli M, uh, headed by Marty Sheck. Uh, so many uh, upstanding uh, citizens of our great uh, city uh, play in this league, and I appreciate the opportunity to help out run the league and hope in the future to help out even more. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the commission? Can I just comment on that, Mayor? <laughs> the attorney just said it's not for comment, so. I thought it was not for uh, uh, under our discussion rule, purposes. Under our rules, it's not for comment or discussion. I'm not going to comment. Thank you. But you may if you want. Go ahead. Let's just try and follow our own rules. So. I just Before. wanted to say three cheers for the f this program that we have. It's really... Uh, I have recently learned that, that it's this particular league, the rosters are filled with almost everyone living in our city boundaries, and a lot of the players had um, college baseball experience, minor league baseball experience, and it's a really competitive and a wonderful, um, enjoyable experience. It's a real family thing. The kids come and watch, and it is very, very competitive and very exciting and now I think the, the as you heard the championship was this past weekend and in three weeks I think they start up again so it's just one of many wonderful things we do in our parks thank you thank you um, is there anyone else that wishes to address the Commission going once twice all right um, Seeing as there is no other business I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn made by Vice Mayor Landman, seconded by Commissioner Narotsky. This meeting is officially adjourned. Mm -hmm.